Oh, Empire Table Talk! There's Gage staring at the camera, and welcome everyone to Empire Table Talk, episode 10. Sorry, it opened up with you. I think this was when we were talking about, like, a cage. I think your face is in the camera. And then you immediately turned and stared at it. Hey! <laughs> when we last left our villains, they were, uh, let's see. Heroes. No. Thank you. We can be the heroes of our own No, we story. can't. We, we really we're can't. We're totally can heroes of bring it's, down the countryside. Call, we call it the evil campaign. We cannot be the heroes. You can be the protagonists. We are absolutely the heroes of our own story. You know, no villain sees himself as an actual villain. The, I do. The winners write the history books. All day, every day. Ain't that the truth? Yep. That they do. Anyways, you guys spent your... Uh, and just that fucking well, asshole. Well, jokes on you, Uncle Bob can't write. And okay. Okay. Our winners uh, can choose not to write. Let's stuff, start this shit again so Marcus can actually speak. No, actually, I gotta go. Don't worry. I'll, okay. I'll keep all this. Uh, you guys had just talked with... Uh, Mr... I can never remember his fucking name. Baron Vandermeer. There we go. He's the guy that's going to help you guys out. And then you were told by uh, Teodora that, hey, you got to go talk to the Z- Zadari and the White Ravens now. So you did. You went down to the docks. It was exciting time. She told us, yeah. hey, uh, we'll assassinate people who will give you trouble in town and help you out that way. And half our party threatened her. <laughs> yep. Owen gave her, like, a really good... Owen wrote down his threat so that he could recite it properly. <laughs> Which is too bad why he... too bad that he isn't here right now, because that would be fantastic. Maybe I'll have him just say it next... Or, no, no, because I have to upload this in a couple days. Oh, well. It was a really nice threat. It was all about, like, if you... You know, as threats go, it was yeah. very nice. <laughs> if you overstep your bounds, then I will show you no mercy and murder you, pretty much sort of thing. Uh, so, you guys went down uh, into the Care Briar, the, the, the forest, where you were looking for the horn, which was super easy to find because you guys had already found uh, the old uh, Not Members uh, stuff for uh, the, the map and stuff. Because he apparently found it and then disappeared. And he certainly did find it and then disappeared. Because you saw the map and you're like, oh, there it is. So, you walk down and you... Um, we're just enjoying a nice uh, trek through the through the rainforest. There's like cool little monkeys and and uh, birds and little animals and stuff like that. They look delicious. It was very pretty. It was very very rainforesty. And then you guys ran into Jurak the Elder, and that was a trend. So you guys uh, we chopped him down like good lumberjacks. I mean, yeah. we burned him alive. I mean, we used him as campfire. I mean, you guys spent a lot of time. Uh, Trying to talk him, like, trying to lie to him and tell him, like, oh, uh, like, oh, this place is a place of great evil and I'm not allowing anybody to go into the Horn of Bed. And you guys are like, oh, but we, um, we're, uh... And we're gonna because, purify it! Yeah! yeah we're gonna purify it. No, we're looking I, for something. Michael like, Bob's just like, we are? Smack. I mean, yep. yes. I am human. And then, uh, it, it was decided that you should stop trying to talk him down from it. <laughs> You guys all gave each other a little nod, and uh, then you guys rolled initiative, and uh, the battle lasted for, I believe, two rounds. Uh, Jurak did manage to uh, summon a couple of uh, trees to start moving and punching people, and then he punched, um, I don't know, it was either Owen or... I, or believe, it was, I believe it was Owen. Mm-hmm. And then uh, Owen punched back uh, with his fiery, fiery fists. Which, um, of course, treants would be weak to because fire and trees. Shuriken! And boy, oh, shit, did that end explosively. See, Basically, he ended up killing it in one combo. Yeah, no, what I remember is it started to raise trees, and then Owen was like, No, no, I don't think so. Mm-hmm. And they all just sank back into the ground. Yes, yes. After he, uh, they, they had to spend one round getting out of the ground, mm. and before that could happen, Owen had killed the tree and the trees were all like, okay, and then they go back into the crash. Mm-hmm. <laughs> ah, brilliant. Mm-hmm. Then you guys actually went into the horn. You discovered the horn, you walked into the horn, um, through the uh, sort of swampy area, and as you guys were making your way in, you noticed a couple of weird frog people, and they sort of spotted you, and then they, they ran away. So you guys mm-hmm. were like, oh, that's weird. And you proceeded inside, because you were like, whatever. And uh, after reaching a certain point, you were quote unquote ambushed by, um, I want to say it was three Bogards and their chief. 
That sounds uh, right. The Bogards are the frog people. Yes. Uh, the chief's name was Kumanda Slays Nine Men. He had a great sword. Pretty nice one. He was great. Uh, he... Let's see, I think that battle was very one, quick. It was well. one turn, because uh, Bob, I mean Kaz, uh, pretty much decapitated him with a blunt yeah. object. Yes, yes, that is what happened. I don't know if Kamanda even had got his turn. I know his 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 uh, buddies did. I one punch manned him. Yeah. Like they they ran in and they started cutting the people and then Garrett. Like, well, that's annoying. Smack. Garrett blew up Kamanda and uh, <laughs> uh, that was the end of that. Mm-hmm. Uh, everyone, all the other bogards decided to fuck off. And then they made me their chief. Yes. <laughs> it was good times. Literally, they made him their chief. Because after those bogards fucked up, a few minutes later, uh, another bogard named Zikomo Hears the Father. Uh, that's H E A R S, not H E R E, apostrophe S. <laughs> Showed up and he was like, Yeah, Dagon. And I was like, Yeah, Dagon, how's it going? As I, uh, with my uh, Cthulhu cult ways, even though Dagon is a demon lord, I still know of the way, so it's like, yeah, Dagon, mm-hmm. let's see ya. Uh, apparently what Zikomo had heard from his visions was that a group was going to come here and restore the horn to its former glory, and whoever killed Kumanda Slays Nine Men would be the one to do such. So he asked, uh, which you did it, and mm-hmm. Uncle Bob politely raised his hand. Hi. And Zikomo <laughs> was like, great, you're the new chief. Sweet. <laughs> you get the, you get the, um... You get the chief's hut, you get his treasures, and you get his two consorts. Lovely frog. Wait, only consorts. two? I thought there was like a bunch. Uh, no, I think there's just two. Oh, well, that sucks. No, no, you're gonna get wards in your It's only a 30 person <laughs> tribe! You're gonna get wards in your deck. It Who is. comes up with these prophecies? Evil, dark, malevolent forces beyond the comprehension of man. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Praise and Cthulhu! Bes- and besides that, it wasn't a true. It wasn't exactly what you guys are planning anyway. You like sure you're gonna restore the horn to its former glory, but it's not gonna be a place for Dagon. I mean, unless you want it to be. Uh, so after uh, after the meet and greet, uh, Zakamo uh, decided to lead you guys on a little uh, tour through the through the under areas of the horn, uh, which mm-hmm. is like a sort of a cave system. Uh, this is like the the basement floor, basically, where the bogards all live. Uh, you got to see their uh, their huts, where you found some uh, treasure in among the uh, the bogart, uh, the mm-hmm. old chief stuff, uh, which included some shiny rocks and skulls mm-hmm. and stuff that's completely un- unvaluable, but the chief apparently liked. Uh, then you walked through... Uh, the chief likes the shiny rocks, too. <laughs> then you walked through various other cave systems where you find found cool stuff like... Um, uh, some crystals that looked like diamonds, but they actually weren't, and uh, if you were to walk up to them, the floor would shatter beneath you. It was kind of a natural trap. Uh, you found a pit of acid, uh, like a large, regenerating pit of acid that you plan on using for everything. Yep. <laughs> Do you like acid? I love acid! You know that crystal thing? Yeah, it's got acid on it, too. <laughs> There's a pit of boiling mud that you guys found. There's a huge pit of skeletons, which was, I believe... 1d6 plus 100 skeletons or something like that. Like some really some really pointless number plus 100. <laughs> so that's that's good for necromancy. It's basically what the bogards have been snacking on. Like Skeletons? You know, no, people. Oh, okay. Then they throw up the skeletons. Oh, I see. In the skeleton pit for skeletons. Um, we should totally turn that into a radio. <laughs> and you also found a cave full of blue slime. Yeah. Um, and after... Which I had a prophecy about. Yes, after partaking in Zikomo Here's the Father's Vision Juice, uh, the orc had a prophecy about, mm. hey, there's a tiny hole in the caverns of blue slime that might have something cool in it. And so they, uh, and so he was like, okay, let's go check that out. And uh, they sent in Aki's familiar, mm-hmm. or, his, uh, or her, uh, her witch patron thing, and it made okay, its way sure. in, and it pushed a book out, and the book had the dirges of Apollyon in it, and I will be reading that out eventually, um, probably sometime during this. The Dirges of Apollyon by R. Keppelbrenner 
Behold our shame that we, the sons of the pale horsemen, failed in our darkest hour to defend our prince, the undying and ever malevolent Vitra Kali eats the eyes. But I have seen it. I have seen the road to repentance. 666 prayers, three per day, will break the hated seal. With each prayer, bathe the seal in unholy water and intone the dirge. At the stroke of midnight each day, call forth the supplication to darkness. Pray to the darkness so that we shall be forgiven. Upon the first midnight, make the first sacrifice, one of our own blood, so that Vitra Kali will know that we are repentant. At the first light of each dawn, call forth the cursing of the light. Answer the spread of the shining Lord's light with our unyielding defiance. Upon the 111th curse, make the second sacrifice. A true believer of Mitra, so that the cursed god of the invaders will know that we fear him not, and that his power to hold our master at bay is ending. At dusk, as darkness returns each day, cry forth the call across the void. Recite the name of Vitra Kali, so that he may hear us and return. With the final call, offer the third sacrifice, one of the victor's own blood. By the same blood that caged him, so shall our master be freed. Let ye with wisdom understand, once the final prayer is uttered upon the 222nd dusk, Vitra Kali will begin his long traverse across the great wheel. At the stroke of midnight on that day, he will emerge into his sanctum, and the seal shall shatter. Blessed day! Be ready, my brothers. His eyes have been stolen from him. Return them, and the prince will honor ye with one task for each. For the eye of vigilance, ask only for his mercy upon we mortals, and plead that he do ye and yours no harm, for his wrath will be great. For the eye of hatred, ask for his greatest gift, the tears of Aklis, so that once more every corner of the world may know his mercy. For the eye of withering, ask what ye will, for in his gratitude he must answer your charge. And then behold, the prince restored. All shall know his blessings of pestilence and despair. That'll be fun. I really like making that voice for the crazy guy. Basically, it's a crazy priest saying, hey, to bring back Vitra Kali, you need to do all this great weird shit over the course of 222 days. Sweet! We got the instruction menu! Da 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 da! I want to point out, when we heard we had to do this shit every day for like eight months, we were all fucking like. True. That sounds like something I said. And they also found the uh, one of the three uh, eyes of Vitra Kali, which is a sort of a gem. Uh, the uh, the little dinosaur of Akis had eaten it and promptly regurgitated it after you guys read it, uh, read the uh, dirges. Mm -hmm. And thankfully, uh, Zakomo mentioned, "Oh yeah, if you don't want to live down here for whatever reason in the in the mud pits where we like to hang out." Uh, there's also, like, a totally perfectly functional fortress up above us in, in the higher reaches of the thing. And that's what you guys are going to spend the next session exploring. This... Yes, that we've not done yet. Yes. At all. No, we are not doing this uh, out of order at all. <laughs> Empire Tabletop out.